on day number 31. Uh, day number 31, page 69, and we're talking about lust today. Yes, and our subject is the L words. I know they had a show on HBO called The L Word. They were talking about lesbians, but we're not talking about lesbians today. We're talking about other L words, and you got to find out what those L words are today. We're studying Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, um, the Master's Manifesto on Matters that Matter Most, um, and we're looking at the book, Jesus, the Heart of the Matter. You can find it on Amazon or on our website, Dr. Pulley, D-O-C-T-O-R, Pulley, P-U-L-L-E-Y, at dot com or if you want to send me an email at gmail you can find us on instagram on twitter all that is dr pulley if you desire to watch these messages without any uh commercials you can subscribe to our youtube channel and that's also dr pulley all of it's dr pulley one brand all right so we're on day number 31 page 69 and we're talking about lust matthew chapter 5 and verse number 28 but i say unto you that so whoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. He didn't say you already did it in your body. <laughs> he said you did it in your heart. And you can clean up your heart before it ever comes out of your mouth. You can clean up your heart before you ever do the action. But Jesus was slowing down the process to let people know that there's a process of how people get to things. And the law, they were just concerned about the action of adultery. But Jesus said, you just don't wake up and commit adultery, amen, that there is a process. That's why the kingdom is a way of being, a way of seeing, a way of thinking, a way of speaking, and a way of behaving. So before you get to how you are behaving, you got to look at how I am being, how I am seeing, how I am thinking, how I am speaking, and then get to how I am behaving. So Jesus was concerned in his kingdom manifesto about the process, about how people got to where they are, that why people winded up doing what they were doing, and not just the action, the legalistic piece of it. Jesus was concerned about the whole being. So when people are dealing with adultery, it's not just the behavior, but how are you being? Are you being in a such a way where you're open and fancy free to be with anybody? Is that how you're being? Are you seeing each person as available as a sexual partner for you? Or do you see that there are limits and there are boundaries? What are you thinking about? How are you thinking about people? Are you thinking about them in a lustful way? Um, what are you saying to people? Some people, they roll down the window, they hollering at people on the streets. You know, they're speaking, they're priming people, they're getting numbers. I know I'm not talking to nobody here today, uh, but this adultery that Jesus is talking about is it, a process that before you ever commit adultery, it's about being adulterous. Before you ever commit the act of adultery, Jesus is saying it's about uh, seeing adultery. And, oh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Some people prefer married people. Don't tell nobody I said it. But some people prefer to be with somebody married. They say they're consistent. You ain't got to worry about no foolishness. They serious because they already married. You already know what the deal is. They're not telling you no lies. You already know that they got somebody else and it's just convenient. But don't tell nobody I told you. But some people, they prefer and don't act like you don't know nobody that don't prefer to be with married people. We've had people in our families that had a married person they were with for years and years and years. They had a marital affair and the person never left their husband, never left their wife, but it was just an adulterous affair. And you say, why are you talking about that? Because Jesus talked about it and anything that Jesus talked about, guess what? Pully going to talk about Because Jesus is my way shower. Jesus is my example of what it means to be fully human and fully divine. Amen. So adultery, it has to do with your way of being. You can be adulterous. You can see things in an adulterous way. Um, you can think of adultery. Um, you can also speak adulterous and then you get to the adulterous behavior. So Jesus was into the heart of the matter and not just the legalistic behavior like the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus was really into what was going on in your heart. And Jesus was saying, if you can stop it at the being and the seeing level, then you don't have to get to the behavior. If you can stop it at the thinking and the speaking level, 
then you don't have to actually get to the behavior. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. If you see this five-fold process, a way of being, a way of seeing, a way of thinking, a way of speaking, and a way of behaving. Amen? Jesus was into the heart of the matter. So we're going to deal with some our words today. Um, let me just say this, that Christianity um, and even Judaism, to some extent, is a mon uh, because it is a monotheistic, which means we only have one God, that however you see your relationship with God extends to how you see your relationship with yourself and how you see your relationship with other people. So people who were polytheistic, who had several gods, they also had several partners. Y'all ain't saying that to me this morning. Polytheistic, polyamorous. Uh, so if I have many different gods, a god of the sun, a god of the moon, a god of the water, a god of uh, the plants, a god of the animals. If I got many different gods, then because I got different gods, I got different partners. But to a great extent, um, Christianity has really pushed for monotheistic, which means one God, and monogamy, which means one partner. You know, let everybody have your own husband, have your own wife, uh, because it goes with how you see God. It's very challenging to have multiple gods in one partner. It's very challenging to have one God in many partners. So your relationship, remember, it's about love. Love God, love yourself, love everybody else. So because I am monotheistic, I am monogamous. I got one God and I got one partner. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Can I get some amens or something? It's a little chilly over down here in Florida. All right. We, am I talking good? Am I breaking it down? All right. So it has to do with God. I got one God, so I'm not sharing my body with anybody that I can't share my life. Amen. All right, so let's move forward. We're talking about these L words and pulling point number one. The first L word that we're giving is love. That the true nature and essence of God, that the sexual relationship, the intimate, the sensual experience is really to be birthed out of love. And let's move beyond the legalism. We only got one law, and that law is the law of love. Are you sharing your body with somebody that you don't really love? Are you sharing your body with somebody that you can't share your life with? Amen. Is what you are doing sexually, is it birthed out of love? Because the Bible says, whatever you do in word or in deed, you know, let it be doing all to the glory and honor of God. Um, and so love is not just in word and in tongue, but it's in deed and it's in truth. So when you are a person of the kingdom, when you are following Jesus, your way so shower, whatever you're doing, you're doing it out of love. Love is my motive. So pulling point number one, love has to do with the desire to connect with a person on a deep end intimate level. Love has to do with the desire of sharing yourself, not just your body, but sharing your life with another person, establishing a rapport with a person, establishing a relationship with a person, dealing with a person, the good, the bad, the ugly, being willing to make compromise. All that is love. But many times people are in relationships and the foundation is not love. And we wonder why the relationship is unhealthy because the foundation isn't love. We wonder why the relationship is toxic because the foundation is not love. Amen. So I love God. I love myself. I love my partner. I love everybody else. That what I do is based out of love because my body, come on, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body, I'm not sharing it with everybody. I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. Amen. So therefore, I'm sharing my body with the people, with the person I'm sharing my life with. Amen. And what I do sexually is based out of love. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Amen. So, but so we got to start with love. We're not starting with right and wrong and legalism and what you know. You're going to hell and this ain't right. Let's just start with love. That love is the intention behind every action that I have. Love is my motive. Love is my intention. Love guides my every decision. Love guides my every in uh, every behavior. Love is the guide. So why is love the guide for everything else? And then when it comes to sex, that something else is the guide. Amen. That's just my first L word. And my first L word is 
love. That when you start with love, everything else flows in divine right order. Because God is love. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. She that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Is love the intention? Is love the motive? Is love the guiding force behind everything that you do? When I start with the law, we're starting, well, we are starting with the law, the one law, which is the law of love, where in their day, they were starting with the law, the legalistic law, which was thou shall not commit adultery. And so before you get into the shelt knots and the can knots and the can, let's start with love. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. If you are, are have the intention for love to be the motive behind everything you do, even sexually, even sensually, it's coming out of love. And if it's not birthed out of love, I ain't doing it. Amen. All right. Pulley point number two. I got another L word for you. Is lust. <laughs> Sometimes it's not coming out of love. It's coming out of lust. Now, love is the desire, the idea and divine mind of universal oneness, where you see your oneness with that person. And because you see your oneness with that person, then you desire to connect with them on a deeper physical, intimate level. You see yourself one with them spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and then you bring it to a physical level. That's love, a desire to connect and to be one with another person. Pulley point number two, lust has to do with unlawful desire. And we call unlawful desire wants, which means that just because you desire or want to connect with somebody doesn't mean that that person is available for a connection. And so lust has to do with an unlawful, which means anytime I'm desiring someone or wanting someone and it's not coming out of love, the other place that it comes from is lust. Is it lust or is it love? If it starts with lust, there's going to be chaos, confusion, contention. It's not going to last because it didn't start with love. It started with lust. It says, now abide in faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is love. And so if it doesn't start with love, love is not going to be in the middle and love is not going to be at the end. But often we start with lust and try to turn it into love. But the alpha is the omega. How things began is often how they end. So lust means an unlawful desire or a want. I want you. Amen. You know, it's that arrows. I want you, but it's an unlawful desire. Unlawful because uh, Jesus is talking about adultery. It's unlawful because you with somebody else. You married to somebody else. You committed to somebody else. It's unlawful because it's coming out of lust and you are not available to build a life together. You're not available to build love together. So uh, you're not, I don't want to share my life with you and you don't want to share your life with me. That's unlawful. It's not coming out of the law of love. It's coming out of lust. It's coming out of a, a just a, a human need. It's coming out of a lower level consciousness. It's coming out of the valley. It's coming out of the plain. It's not coming out of the mountain. Many times we desire mountaintop relationships with people, but the alpha of how that relationship started and what it's based on is on the, is on the valley. It's on lust. Amen. It's not based on love. So if you desire a mountaintop relationship, if you desire this loving relationship, then the motive and the attention, the foundation of it has to be love. If it's lust, it's not going to last. That's right. I said it. If it's lust, it's not going to last. I'm going to say it one more time because you stop lusting after them and you start lusting after somebody else. They stop lusting after you and they start lusting after somebody else. Amen. If it's based on lust, and that's why Pulley said it at 652 in the morning, if it's based on lust, it's not going to last. Life has challenges, ups and downs and storms, you know, and things that happen. And lust, it, 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 um, it uh, peters out. Yes. But love lasts. Love is forever. And so love is what lasts. Lust doesn't last. If it's based, if your relationship is based on lust, it doesn't last. And that's why I gave you another L word, last. All right. We just full of L words today. The law, which is love. Amen. Pulling point number one is love. Love is the foundation for any healthy relationship. Amen. Love is the foundation for any healthy relationship. Pulley point number two, if it's based on lust, it's not going to last. Lust doesn't last the storm of life. It, 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 can, it says, um, uh, can you, will you be here in the morning? 
<laughs> when it's lust, they ain't there at the borders. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It says, uh, uh, can you stand the storm? They wrote all kinds of songs about it. Were you going to be with me in the rain? No, because it wasn't based on love. It was simply based on lust. And so what Jesus says is let's deal with our lust. Let's look at our heart. Let's not just look at the behavior. Let's look at what the intention was. Let's look at what the motive is. Is it love or is it lust? If it's love, it will last if it's lust, it's not going to last. The foundation of any healthy relationship is love. Amen. All right? All right. So uh, lust has to do with unlawful desire or a want. And the Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There is no want to them that fear him. So wants will keep you wanting. When, you, that, when you're dealing with stuff out of lust, you're never satisfied. It's never fulfilled. You're always hungry for more because it's based on lust. It let lust can become insatiable. Amen. It's never enough. You're never satisfied. You're always looking for something. You're always on the prowl. You're always on the search, trying to find somebody else, trying to find something better because that's lust. Amen, somebody. And it's time for you to deal with your lust while we're on this consecration. The Bible says all that's in the world is the lust of the eye. It looks good. The lust of the flesh. I'm craving it. And the pride of life. I want to show this person off. It says, and that's not of the Father. It's of the world. Just as the kingdom is a way of being, seeing, thinking, speaking, and behaving in which God is the center, the world is that way of being, seeing, thinking, speaking, and behaving that leaves God out. How are you going to have love in your life and you left God out of it? <laughs> How are you going to have a love that lasts and God is not the part of it? God is not the center of it. So God needs to be the center even of your bed. God needs to be the center of every aspect of your life. I know I'm stepping heavy this morning. Amen. But I'm just giving it to you. Because people think that because we kingdom, we just freaky deaky. We just do anything. Oh, they kingdom child. They just do anything. No. It's based on the law of love. Love gives me the freedom to do what I do when I know it's coming from a place of love. And when it's lust, I know that it is an, an unlawful desire or a want. Amen. All right. And pulley point number three. So lust means that there is, there is no commitment. And let me just clear this up. Some people think it's adultery only if based on the other person is married. Well, I'm not married. They married. So they're the ones committing adultery. I'm not committing adultery because I'm not. But you know they married. You know that you don't want to reap what you're sowing in that person's relationship. I'm going to just break it on down today. That whatever the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you also going to reap. If you are sowing in infidelity, unfaithfulness, and lies, that's really what it's based on. Another L word. Lust is often based on lies. That people are lying. That's what adultery is based on. It's based on lies that they're, that you're hiding, that everybody doesn't know what's going on. Everybody hasn't agreed to what's going on. And therefore, people get hurt. People are devastated. People have gotten shot and killed with this adultery. Jesus said, let's pay attention to it. All right. Pulley point number three. All right. It's lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is unbridled lust or lust that has gotten out of control. So you can have lust and say, okay, let me bring it back in. Back. Let me reel myself in and let me get back to love, which is my focus. We all have lusted after something or somebody. Amen. Everything you've done has not always been out of love. Sometimes it's been out of lust, but it's easy to rein lust in and focus back on love. To take my focus off the lust and to re focus and to realign my attention back on the love. Amen. So lust just needs to be realigned, rechanneled. Let me get myself together. This is coming out of lust. It's not coming out of love. So let me refocus. Somebody say refocus. Let me align myself with divine mind. But pulley point number three is lasciviousness. Yes, it's a word. Lasciviousness which means unbridled, uncontrollable lust. The thing about lust is if you don't bring it under control, lust will control you. Can I say it again? Lust, if it's not brought under control, that lust will control you. Control your lust before your lust controls you. And the only thing that can cause you to control your lust is going back to the law of love. Lasciviousness is unbridled, uncontrollable lust, 
out of control, lust off the chains. So let me give you some examples of lasciviousness. When you when people do exhibitionist, you know, type of stuff when they're doing that, flashing themselves, that's lasciviousness. That's lust out of control. When people are, you know, you know, uh, peeping in, you know, watching people without their permission, voyeurism, that's lasciviousness. It's lust that has gotten out of control. When people are molesting children, lasciviousness, lust is out of control. When people are, you know, abusing the elderly and those who are mentally challenged, that is lasciviousness. Lust that has gotten out of control. It's lasciviousness. So there are rape and incest. All of those things are lasciviousness that the lust has gotten out of control. And so bring the lust under control at the at when you notice it. Come back to love because, because it's not based on love. It's based on lust. And so therefore that lust gets out of control and it becomes lasciviousness. And you on your phone all the time. Effectively, and you're not paying attention to your relationship because there's lasciviousness. You are addicted to porn. You are prostitutes. Come on. Uh, they don't call them prostitutes anymore. They call them not social workers. They call them sex workers now, like social workers, sex workers. I grew up old school. They call them prostitutes. You know, so that's lasciviousness. The lust has gotten out of control because you're paying for it. And so bring your lust under control before your lust controls you. Get back to love. Let love be your motive. Let love be your guide. Let love be your intention. Because if you don't make it out of love, let me tell you that lust will get out of control and lead you to lasciviousness. All right, which is mean lust out of control off the chains, lust on 100. So come on, come back under love, come back to love and let love be your intention. I'm giving you some L words today. Pulley point number one is love. Let love be the guide of every decision you make. Even when it comes to your sexuality and your sensuality, let love be the guide. Let love be your law. Pulley point number two, and uh, sometimes things are coming out of lust which means an un, um, unlawful desire, which is a want. And so if you notice that there's lust there, come back to love. Amen. The love, lust doesn't have the boundaries, doesn't have the limits. It's just I want what I want. And then you got to bring that lust under control because it can lead to lasciviousness which means unbridled, uncontrollable lust, where lust is controlling your life and driving your bus. Amen. I love you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the Daily Download. I know 